When I look at Africa, many questions come to mind. Many times I ask myself, what would happen if Mwalimu were to rise up and see what is happening? Many times I ask myself, what would happen if Kwame Nkrumah and Patrice Emery Lumumba were to rise up and see what is happening? Because what they would be confronted with is an Africa where the Democratic Republic of Congo is unsettled. There is a war going on there, but it is not on the front pages of our newspapers because we don't even control our newspapers and the media. As I speak to you, the Central African Republic is at war. But we talk of it only mutedly. As I speak to you now, in South Sudan, the youngest nation in Africa, the Nuer of reason against the Dinka. As I speak to you now, Eritrea is unsettled. As I speak to you now, there is an ease in Egypt as there is an ease in Libya. In Niger, it is no better. In Senegal, in the Casamans, it is no better. In Somalia, it is no better. Africa is at war with herself. This is what they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with an Africa which statistician and romantic economists say is growing, but which in truth is stagnated. That is the Africa that they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with an African which, as Professor Mlama intimated in our presentation here, is an African which is suffering from schizophrenia. He does not know herself. They would be confronted with an African whose young men and women have no interest and no love for their continent. They would be confronted with an Africa where young men and young women are constantly humiliated at the embassies of European countries and at the United States of America as they seek the almighty green card. They would be confronted with an Africa where young men and women from Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Mali, and Mauritania drown in the Mediterranean as they seek to be enslaved in Europe. This time round, Africans are not wailing and kicking as they are being taken away to be enslaved. They are being seen wailing and kicking as they seek to be enslaved in Europe and America. This is the tragedy of Africa. They'll be confronted with an African where people have lost their self-pride. An Africa where Africans are not proud of their things. An Africa where in the hotels of Dar es Salaam or Nairobi, even food has foreign names. When we fry potatoes, we call them French fries, even when they are fried in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> that is the Africa that they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with another Africa, an Africa which does not tell her story, an Africa whose story is told by Europe and America, the CNN, Radio Deutsche Welle, Radio France. That is the Africa they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with young men and women who have no pride in Africa when they want to enjoy themselves. They sing the praises of football teams from Europe and America. It is Manchester United. It is Arsenal. It is Real Madrid. And Barcelona, not Younger, not Mufulira Wanderers, not Gormahia, not FC Leopards. No. That is the Africa that they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with an Africa which does not enjoy the theater and drama. Then Africa celebrates Leonardo DiCaprio. It celebrates Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. The Africa does not celebrate Genevieve Naji of Nigeria 
or Rita Dominic or, or Lou Jacobs of Nigeria. He does not celebrate Bongo Wood or Nollywood or Riverwood. He celebrates Hollywood. That is the Africa with which they would be confronted. They would be confronted with African women whose greatest source of joy is cheap grade B Mexican soap opera, La Patrona, La Mujer de Mi Vida. The rich also cry. <laughs> Why must we remind ourselves of these realities? Because throughout the ages, the battle has always been the battle of the mind. And if your mind is conquered, then you are going nowhere. And that is why in the ages of enlightenment in Europe, the great René Descartes said, Cogito ego sum, I think, therefore I am. And therefore, if Africans are to begin to make a contribution in their affairs, Africans must begin to think. But the question is, are we thinking? We have universities in their numbers. Tanzania has universities including Dar es Salaam. Nairobi has universities as indeed Kampala, as indeed South Africa, Johannesburg. We have all these universities. We have engineers. But our roads are not being made by Tanzanian civil engineers. It is the Chinese who are present in this assembly who are making our role. So we have engineers who cannot even make roads. We have doctors whom we have trained. But when we are sick, particularly if we are of the political class, depending on who colonized you. If you are colonized by the United Kingdom, you rush to London. If you are colonized by the French, you rush to Paris. If you are colonized by the Portuguese, you rush to Lisbon. And if you are colonized by the Spaniards, you rush to Madrid, Spain. And recently, because the Asians are beginning to get their act together, we run to India. And very lately, because the Arabs are also beginning to get their act together, we run to Dubai. Notwithstanding that we have the Kenyatta hostels of this country, the Muhimbilis of Tanzania, the Chris Hani Baragwanaths of South Africa, we and the Mamayemos of Kinshasa in Zahe or the Democratic Republic of Congo, but we have no faith in our doctors. In the area of education, we also don't have faith. Our political class introduced something that they call free education, but it's free indeed, free of knowledge. <laughs> because they are so suspicious of those institutions that the typical African politician would not dare take their children to those schools. Their children will be educated in, in the British system, in the American system, so that when they graduate, they go to the United Kingdom, to the United States. Not that there is anything wrong with those institutions, but the agenda is wrong because our leaders long lost the script and ought to be described for who they are, our misleaders. But we are co-authors of our own misfortune. Whenever we are given an opportunity to elect our leaders, we are given a blank check. And if you permit me a little latitude, and if you give me a blank check, and you allow me to analogize, and you say that I'm given the blank check to buy a Mercedes-Benz, what we do is that when we are called upon, having been so empowered, we buy what one calls a tuk-tuk from India and expect it to behave like a Mercedes-Benz. How does that happen? Because what we do is to elect thieves. We elect hyenas to take care of goats, and when the goats are consumed, we wonder why. In the name of the African ancestors who began the march of humankind in the womb of Mother Africa, we ask these ancestors to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. In the name of the African ancestors who began the march of humankind in the womb of Mother Africa and marched down the Nile, 
laying the foundations for human civilization and culture. We ask these Africans to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. In the name of these African ancestors who built their pyramids and their temples to their God concepts, to their principles, and to their moral values, who left us a legacy of architectural and monumental building unparalleled in the history of the world. We ask these ancestors who built the pyramids, who built the temples, to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. We ask these African ancestors who took this African culture and extended it throughout Africa, building the stone cities of Zimbabwe, building the empires of the Sudan, Ghana, Mali, and Sangai, building the Swahili city-states along the east coast of Africa, and in Christian Africa, asking King Lalibela and giving him the courage to build the 12 churches of Lalibela from the ground down, monuments to the world. We ask these Africans who spread this culture to the Dogo and to the Akan and to the Yoruba and to the Bantango and to the Nzulu. We ask these Africans to be with us, to strengthen us and give us a vision for the future. In the name of the Africans who opened up Africa, opened up the Nile Valley to other cultures and other peoples and they came in and nurtured themselves on the African greatness. First coming in early with the ancient Hebrews and they synthesized this culture and produced Judaism. Later coming in with the Christians and they synthesized this culture and produced Christianity. Coming in were also the Greeks who took the African culture, synthesized it and produced Greek civilization. And then later the Prophet Muhammad and with the Arabs coming into the Nile Valley, they synthesized the culture and produced Islam. We ask these African ancestors who as part of their legacy laid the foundations for Judaism, Christianity, Islam and Greek civilization to be with us, to strengthen us and give us a vision for the future. We ask those African ancestors pulled out of Africa, taken to the hells of North America, South America, the Caribbean, maintaining the spirit of African humanity in their hearts and in their minds, and who left us this enormous legacy of struggle. We ask those Africans who resisted enslavement in the villages of Africa, who resisted enslavement in the shores of Africa, who resisted enslavement in those forts and dungeons, who resisted enslavement in the holes of those ships, who resisted enslavement when they arrived on these shores in the New World. We ask these Africans who ran into the highlands of Northeast Brazil and established for 100 years the first free republic in the Americas, the Republic of Palmares, and their last great leader, Zumbi, whose spirit and sacrifice we ask these Africans who replicated the Brazilian experience and went into the highlands of Jamaica and became the maroon free communities. We ask these Africans who went into the backwoods of the Guyanas and Suriname and created free republic of the Suramaka and the Ajuka. We ask these Africans who went into the backwoods of Georgia and the swamps of Florida and moved with the Seminole Indians and resisted oppression. We ask these Africans who left us a legacy of struggle and resistance, the likes of which no one in the world has to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. We ask these Africans who created and laid for us a foundation of struggle and resistance that was passed on generation after generation, that was passed on to Harriet Tubman, who fought away out of enslavement and became a symbol of freedom for all of us. Similarly, Frederick Douglass and hundreds of thousands of others fought their way out of enslavement, we ask those Africans who went with Bookman Dessaline to create the greatest revolutionary experience in the history of the world, the Haitian Revolution, leaving us a legacy, the likes of which no one else has had. We ask these Africans to be with us, to strengthen us, and give us a vision for the future. Welcome to the Africa Forum. It's Running African. Reuniting the African family for development. Reuniting the African family for development is a vision. A mission blazing new paths towards Africa's rendezvous with destiny. Bearing witness demanding change. Crafting an African-centered agenda for change and development. Honoring my moral obligation to remember. Uncle 
Jahasanam. Anko Jahasanam. Yes. And let the African spirit unite us as we attempt to continue the struggle. Confident that we will conquer. Aluta continua. Avetora is certa. Jasanab Life, Prosperity, Health. Indamin Adu. Good morning. Tanastalan, greetings to you. Jambo Wate, how are you doing? Reminding ourselves that we are Africans, not because we were born in Africa. We're Africans because Africa was born in us. The words of Chester Higgins, Jr. Uncle Johnson. You're inside of the Africa Forum. It is running African. We gather in this space, breaking the cycle of mental control. Understanding that he who holds the land holds economic power. The vision of the program is to reunite the African family for development. Our mission includes blazing new paths towards Africa's rendezvous with destiny. Bearing witness, demanding change. Aquaba. Aquaba to you also on your Android, your mobile apps. You're welcome to the Pan African space. We are unapologetically. African. Proud of who we are. Understanding what it means to be African. Sankofa in the space. As Mola Marcus Mazai Garvey tells us, always trying to look beyond the present by calling upon your past experience when you're looking at the future. Running African, reuniting the African family for development. Strange fruit and blood at the roots. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit. Pastoral scene of the gallant South. Them big bulging eyes and the twisted mouth. Magnolia clean and fresh then the sudden smell of burning flesh here is 
bunch of fruit for the crows to pluck. The rain to gather for the wind to suck for the sun to rot
precious Lord Take my hand Lead me on Let me stand Mm-hmm. 
African family for development. Well, we're kicking things off uh, with information coming out of uh, uh, Kenya. Five men have been charged in a Kenyan court. That was the deadliest carried out by Al Shabaab which is affiliated to Al-Qaeda. Most of those who died in the raid were students 
and the attacker singled out Christians to be killed while sparing Muslims. The names of the 148 killed were all read out in court in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. And the judge, Judge Daniel Ogembo, remanded the accused in custody until June 11 when the court would rule on their bail application. Most of those who died in the day-long siege at Garissa were undergraduates. And uh, disturbing news coming out of Uganda. Ugandan families have been subjected to bribery, trickery and coercion for them to give up their children to United States citizens and other foreigners for adoption. This is according to a Thomas Reuters Foundation report which was released late last week. Invest investigations from the Thomas Reuters Foundation have obtained documents, court data and interviews with whistleblowers, officials, victims and prospective parents establishing that children's birth histories are manipulated to give a false impression that some of these children are orphans. It also established that lawyers act as middlemen, often receiving large payments, and also that adoption on the world is a lucrative business with a culture of corruption and much more in Uganda. Data obtained from the United States 101 children adopted in 2013-2014. Uganda falls behind Ethiopia and the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which have taken steps to restrict foreign adoptions. Really, really disturbing news coming out of Uganda. According to the report, leaked data from Uganda's Ministry of Gender, Labor, says as many as 20% of the children put forward for adoption were really orphans. 80% weren't. The report also found that some parents gave up their children in the belief that they would receive... And in Gambia, Gambian President Yaya Jame has ordered European Union charge affair Agnes Juliard to leave the country. The president announced that Juliard was given 72 hours to leave the West African nation. And this announcement was broadcast on the state radio in the capital, Banjul, on Friday. The president didn't give any reason for the expulsion. On the same day, Gambia's government formally requested the International Criminal Court, the ICC, to investigate the circumstances surrounding the deaths of African migrants trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea to the European mainland. President Jami made the request at a meeting with the ICC Chief Prosecutor Fatou uh, Ben Souda, and this is according to a statement read on state radio on Friday in the capital, Banjou. Of course, many are linking the expulsion of the European Union uh, ambassador to the migrants. Last year, at least 3,500 asylum seekers and migrants died while crossing the Mediterranean Sea to southern Europe. A further 219,000 people successfully made the crossing. The number of deaths has risen dramatically as boats operated by smugglers have capsized off Libya's coast, triggering alarm among European leaders seeking to halt the flow. In early May, the UNHCR, the United Nations Refugee Agency, estimated that around 60,000 men, women and children had braved the Mediterranean so far this year. More than 2,000 have perished in the attempt so far. Meanwhile, the EU has summoned the Gambian ambassador for an explanation. So it looks like tit for tat between Gambia and the European Union. And uh, Rwanda, it seems, has been ranked the third greenest destination in the world. That's interesting news, considering all that we know. Rwanda has made history, and uh, Africa is proud after Rwanda was ranked the third greenest country worldwide by an international travel guide for adventurous travels, the World Travel Guide. Rwanda has made Africa proud, it said, after it was ranked third greenest country 
in the world by the World Travel Guide. This ranking will not only boost the tourism industry and provide confidence to all travelers visiting the country, but it will also go a long way in changing the people's perspective of Rwanda as a country marred with a dark past. According to the list, Rwanda scooped third position, Costa Rica taking up top spot, and Ecuador was second. The list of greenest places released by the Global Tourist Guide looks at the top countries out of 20 destinations from all over the world that are striving to be environmentally friendly. And the 20 countries that made it on the list, we can tell you some of those. Uh, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Rwanda, Uruguay, Brazil, Italy, Switzerland, that's in, in order too. Finland, and uh, the Pitcairn Islands, the Isle of Egg of Scotland, Bhutan, Sweden, Australia, Copenhagen, uh, Chumba Island in Tanzania, Britain, Iceland, Canada, um, as well as islands in Portugal and Portland, Oregon. You might recall that Rwanda actually banned the use of plastic bags recently, making it one of the cleanest nations on the planet. Last year, the Central African nation hosted a total number of about 1.22 million visitors, compared to 1.1 million in the previous year, an annual increase of 97,000 visitors. Can you imagine that? Rwanda has banned the use of plastic bags. That's a very good idea. And you might have noticed that FIFA is still in the news. <laughs> we're going to be talking about that. And uh, we're waking up to news this morning from the BBC. And uh, we are also waking to news from the South African Broadcasting Corporation. We're going to be talking about that later. But let's start with the BBC. A BBC investigation has seen evidence, it says, um, that details... Uh, what happened to the $10 million purportedly sent from FIFA to accounts controlled by former Vice President Jack Warner. The money sent on behalf of South Africa was meant to be used for its Caribbean diaspora legacy program. I've been calling around to ask if anybody knows what that program is. Anyway, the BBC, BBC says documents suggest that Mr. Warner use a payment for cash withdrawals, personal loans, and to launder money. Um, launder money. But what's interesting is that this is also in the indictment, because if you read the indictment, this bit of information um, is also there. FIFA says it's cooperating with the investigation, and South Africa's Football Association has issued a detailed statement denying any wrongdoing. We have reached out to South Africa in many ways. We've invited um, representatives from the South Africa High Commission uh, to talk with us here. They sent us to the website for the official statement that we're talking about. We've also called South Africa, and we're not able to get anyone. But most persons are mum, well, with the exception of Jack Warner <laughs> on this whole FIFA thing. And their lawyers, I think, have um, instructed them and advised them not to speak publicly about this. Now, the, according to the BBC, the papers seen by the BBC detail three wire transfers by FIFA in the three transactions, January 4, February 1, and March 10, 2008, funds totaling $10 million from FIFA accounts were received into CONCACAF accounts controlled by Jack Warner. Now, this information is available in, in quite a few places. At the time, the BBC uh, is pointing out Jack Warner was in charge of the body which governs football in North and Central America and the Caribbean. The BBC is also reporting this morning that the money had been promised by South Africa's Football Association for its so-called diaspora legacy program to develop football in the Caribbean. The documents reveal how the money was spent and moved around. JTA Supermarkets, a large tr uh, chain in Trinidad, received 4.86 million that from the accounts. And the money was paid, according to the BBC, and the money was paid in installments from January 2008 to, 2000 to March 2009. The largest payment was 1.35 paid in February 2008. U.S. prosecutors say the money was mostly paid back 
to Mr. Warner in local currency. Now, if you read the indictment, a lot of this is there. I don't know how many of you have taken the time to actually read the indictment, but it makes sense to read it, especially if you love to read like espionage novels, <laughs> Robert Ludlum and um, John Grisham. <laughs> Just read, read the indictment. And even more so, if you love these kinds of novels, Believe me, read the, the Chuck Blazer um, deposition. That is something else. You know, I sat down and I read the indictment in one sitting. And it just felt like I was reading a, a John Grisham. And then when I read the Chuck Blazer's um, deposition, it was the very same thing. You know, I, it's just like reading one of those novels, man. Right? In a minute, we'll be speaking with Professor Vereen Shepard. We, this particular story, objects recovered by a joint South African-U.S. team from the Portuguese ship that saw Jose Paquete, the Africa. Hope we're pronouncing that one right. It went down in rough conditions just 100 meters off the coast of Cape Town in December 17, 94. It is thought to have been transporting more than 400 enslaved people from Mozambique to Brazil. The ship was sailing at a time when people captured on Africa's east coast were being brought into the transatlantic trade, which mostly involved the continent's west coast. And this is according to the Smithsonian Museum. I'm going to be talking to Professor Shepard in just a minute. We, the historical significance of this. Here inside of the Africa Forum, it is running African, restoring dignity. National Commission on Reparations here in Jamaica, Director of the Institute for Gender and Development Study at the University of West Indies, and of course, historian uh, extraordinaire. We go to the phone lines where Professor Shepard is standing by. Good morning, Professor Shepard. Okay, we're trying this one more time. Professor Shepard, are you there? Yeah, she is. Yes, yeah. you. Are you hearing me, Vereen? Okay. No, she's not. Try that. Okay, I think we have you now, Vereen. Good morning. Good morning. Good okay. morning, Sabu. It is good to be an engineer among all. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've called them the slavers. The slavers, right? Mm. Um, traversing the waters, but we have not heard much about um, ships that go down and and what happened and mm. you know whether or not they're still there. Even though we, we we surmise that that happens. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of that? What happens? Yes, there there are many accounts that we have indicating that ships went down. But this is the first account that we have indicating that ships went down. But this is the first way transatlantic trade or other, other slave routes, because remember that there were other routes apart from the transatlantic route. Yes. And um, so, so that is why this particular ship is interesting. Uh, we know what a, a, a slaver would have looked like. We have... We have evidence, visual representations, let's say, of this, the, the brooks. That is the most famous one where people have seen how the enslaved Africans were packed 
like sardines, you know, we have that mm -hmm. image. So we know what they look like. We have captain's reports like Falcon Bridge um, describing the treatment on board. We have evidence of resistance by the enslaved Africans. And we have our own case of the Zong that went off course where Africans were thrown overboard. So rather than allow the ship to sink, trade, and also placing the Western Cape firmly, and also knowing now that mo the people from Mozambique... Well, we have always known that Mozambique was involved in the transatlantic trade, that people from Mozambique were captured and shipped to... Uh, and the, uh, and so that the, the significance of this, I, I hear you saying that it, it cements this. Um, would, what, what if you were to, to itemize the historical significance of this, what would you say is, is, you know, maybe the top three most important things that we're gaining here now with this knowledge? Well, first of all, we realize the, the length of the, the journey that some enslaved Africans would have had to endure because this was coming around the, the Cape, okay, the Cape of Good Hope around South Africa. And imagine that they were, they, they were in, the Portuguese were involved in the Eastern trade so-called trade mm -hmm. coming around so they are mining from mozambique tanzania kenya some some of those are going to into the what we call the oriental the expansion of the the, the 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 capturing and shipping of enslaved africans from east africa around cape it and and they and as when when brazil and portuguese portugal stepped up their participation in the 18th century it it, it prolonged the transatlantic trade a lot, a lot of artifacts are there. We have these iron bars, and we know that they were used as ballast to balance the, the, the human beings on board mm -hmm. to balance the ship. And so these iron bars are going to be important. They have found shackles, um, you know, all the, 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 all, all the... So it's really significant about uh, what it represents. Um, it is different from the other wrecks that have been found. And it will, it will, as I said, it, it, it raises once again the role of the Portuguese in the transatlantic trade. It also looks at, the, it, it also um, cements the, the importance of history because they did archival work to locate the, where the wreck would have, um, was and also looked at the evidence left behind by the ship, ship's captain to help mm -hmm. them to locate the wreck for a lot of reasons. But also, Kabul, you know, look at what is going to come out of this now. Yes. Memorial in Washington at the Smithsonian in South Africa. And we don't have that kind of... It reminds us of the... can display what we have as evidence of the transatlantic trade. The, the Institute of Jamaica houses artifacts. JNHT um, contains artifacts in their holdings. But we only see these occasionally. Mm -hmm. We need to find a place where we, too, in this region, can educate our people about exactly what happened, look at the artifacts, and have memorial, because that, they are planning a major museum to, to display. Memorial of yes. sort, in terms of uh, yes. uh, dirt being taken, soil dirt being from taken Mozambique, from Mozambique. Yes, printed yes. on the site. Yes. A memorial service was held. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to to really honor the memory during the Napoleonic Wars, when the royal family moved to from Lisbon to Brazil, special permission were give, uh, was given to increase the number of Africans shipped from from Africa to Brazil. So all of this brings out the fact that the Portuguese were the first in the 15th century to start this transatlantic trade. Then also be, they were involved in the oriental trade and in the eastern trade coming around and then the transatlantic. And they, the Port Portuguese America was the destination of almost 40% of Africans shipped to this part of the world. Portuguese America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, is, that is like 6 million enslaved Africans. It, Britain was next. So Britain, between Britain and Portugal, they accounted for like 7 out of 10 transatlantic slaving voyages. So what I'm saying is that this find of Portugal's role in the transatlantic trade and also their responsibility to enter the reparation discourse.
because this is significant because and Brazil must come on board now for the reparation uh, in the reparation movement. Do you know if we've had any any response yet from from Portugal regarding regarding that? I know that you know different organizations, but gov from government, I haven't heard anything from Neither the yeah. state. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, many you know Pan Africanists are commenting, individuals are commenting. Um, but I think that in time, um, because the movement is 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 growing in time. I think, you know, maybe they will make a, a response. The people cannot be held responsible. But um, no, we, ha we, have, we have all the evidence we need now, I think, mm -hmm. to really um, press the case. So this case, this, this is very... When the, when the, when in, 19, in the 1970s, when the, the, the ship, the slave of Friedensborg was found, this argument was raised once again because Norway had been denying that they were involved in the trade. So Denmark and, and, and Norway, they were placed firmly in the transatlantic um, trade. trade so, yeah. so now here's another country that uh, we knew, we, of course we always knew that Portugal was involved, but now we're adding the evidence. The evidence is building. Mm -hmm. And there are lessons for us that um, we must not be afraid to tell what happened and to display what happened so that our people can be connected in and a real way to this history. And one of the things uh, you talked about was the, the, the memorials that will, uh, that will be, so I'm going to have to go see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and as you talk about connecting um, persons uh, to their history, I looked at this, um, Professor Shepard, and I thought to myself, where is this being talked about? Did this make African diaspora news um, anywhere? Well, maybe not in our region as much as we... Sh I mean, you're talking about it now. I talked about it on my program. But I haven't heard it in mainline news, you know. It's just um, Pan-African is sending it around on Facebook. See, we've had it on CNN. So we're very quick to look at modern-day trafficking. And that's the direction in which the EU wants to push us. We must focus on modern-day slavery and work against human trafficking now. And of course we must. But they, in, in the process, they are burying the transatlantic trade, the historic trade. That's what they're trying to do. And we and now we have seen it also in, in, in what happened about making amends and um, mm -hmm. looking at the debt that France owes to Haiti. Yes. Several days later after that and, and that excitement, we, were, we, we heard he was talking about a moral debt. And then it, it descended even further to it's not so much debt cancellation, yes. even though that's like 56 point something million. But, um, he, but no, no, and, and he's going to fix the education system. That's part of preparation, infrastructural development, and that's fine. But no recognition of the historic um, wrong and amends for historic wrong. And that is what I, I'm seeing. So what I'm hoping will come out of this, though, is that those people who are involved in the reparation movement um, will hold Portugal to account mm -hmm. to an mm -hmm. even greater extent. No, no, the archaeologists may not. Be, what I've noticed, you see, Kabu, is that some of the researchers are, and the archaeologists, the, the, you know, they are, the dive, you know, those, those involved, people in the museum, they are disconnected from the reparation movement. It's, 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 it's grassroots people, Pan-Africanists, who will have to take the evidence that they unearth to, to, to fight the movement. And how but, nice it would be mm -hmm. if they would also join. That's you right. And I, and I thought that too when I read all the possible reports coming about yes. um, this ship. And I mm -hmm. thought to myself, well, maybe, I wonder if the word reparations is giving people trouble. And I, and I realized a lot of people are talking about dignity restoration and how you deal with, uh, although that is included yes. in, in, yes. in, 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 in the wider reparations uh, well, conversation. Well, that's, that's the, the trend, you see, even in the Durban Declaration and Program of Action, in the decade document, everybody skirts around the word reparation. They'd use, they, they would find every other R word, repair, regret, <laughs> restore, <laughs> restore. <laughs> um, yes. and, and, and reparation, apparently, you know, uh, rep repatriation, those are bad words. Yes, yes. And they skirt around because um, for a document to get passed in the UN, you cannot use the word reparation, apparently. 
Um, I did try to squeeze it in in the decade document, and I think it appears one or two places. Mm -hmm. But it was a real fight to actually get that to stay. Mm -hmm. Um, It is on the international stage in terms of states, where where state parties are concerned. It is is a a real fight. And Mm -hmm. um, those people who are perhaps lobbying for UN posts and who are known reparationists uh, run the risk of not actually being vote elected you know because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because and it's up to you to say well am i going to sacrifice mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. principles for mm-hmm. for a post or yeah. you know this is this is the package so sort of take it or leave it you know yeah i understand totally uh, yeah it's, it's but but let us hope that you know that those who are researching and and those who are finding the evidence i, I keep saying how can you confront this evidence and not feel absolutely sick you know, and or come out of it to say, I am going to join this movement because mm-hmm. this is absolutely wrong. You know, people cannot continue to deny their involvement yeah, yeah. and to say something has to be done. You know, um, I found a very similar thing with the um, the, the atrocities uh, committed by in, in, in the Democratic Republic of, of a Cong- in, in Congo. Mm-hmm. And um, even those who have done the research. Uh, uh, people like Horowitz, and I've spoken to you many times, yes. stop short. You know, you go through and you itemize and you do all this research about the brutalities, mm-hmm. but then you say, no, this is not a case for reparations. It, 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 oh, it, it boggles the mind. Yes. Um, but I think there's a wider context to that, and that is when you think reparations, of course you're, you're going to be thinking about um, part of this is monetary payment, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. nobody wants to go there. And it's, it nobody has, wants to go there. Um, In fact, you may have seen the result of the Oxford Union debate um, in which High Commissioner Samba was involved. Yes. There was a debate at the Oxford Union that students um, should Britain pay reparation to its colonies. Mm -hmm. They moved one, the 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 proposition side one, with um, High Commissioner Samba, a panelist, and I interviewed her yesterday. Yes, yes, I heard You know, her involvement and and how come this was raised and and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was significant. But at the same time, the the researchers from the UK who have gotten a lot of money to study us, study our ancestors, and to, 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 to look at who got compensation, what was done with it, who were the planters, what were they doing. They are not linking their research to the reparation movement. And they were here last week having a, 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 a workshop at the University of the West Indies. But they are scholars, they are historians, they are statisticians, demographic historians and they are just doing their scholarly work Mm -hmm. if we want to take the information and fight reparation that's our business and to me it's the first time that i'm seeing in the history of of liberation movements um involving the caribbean where scholars in the uk are not joining the movement if you look at emancipation if you look at the anti-immigration movement of the of the 17th century yeah if, even if you come forward to morant bay mm-hmm. and look at what happened um even the the, the labor movement the Moyne commission you have always Lord seen history, yes. working class europeans people whether on moral grounds or other grounds who have always condemned the action of the state right but for the first and even the emancipation movement much as we highlight the role of Africans in emancipation, we must admit that there was a faction in the UK, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. in, and, in, and all over Europe working for liberation for whatever reason. You but know, now we see the trend where they're disconnecting themselves I, from going, the movement. I am going to invite you, Professor Shepard, to join us when we, because I think on June 28th, or thereabouts, we're going to be talking about theologies of liberation um, with Reverend uh, Marjorie Lewis. Mm-hmm. And I think just as you talk about the liberation liberation movements and the, and the changes that we're seeing mm-hmm. um, in, in, in recent times, I think it's something that we can look at further, explore further as to why is this so. Um, I, I, I've always just simply pointed back everything to funding, you know, um, where the money is coming from, especially for the researchers, mm-hmm. because we mm-hmm. have these conglomerates that, who have got involved at, on, on many, and countries yeah. um, on many, many different levels in terms of funding research and so on. But, but that is just me looking at the surface. I think it's something that we need to delve yes, into. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yes, I think 
a lot has to do with um, who who is backing the research, mm -hmm. and um, and it was interesting that in that debate at the Oxford Union, um, the proposing side had all black people, and the <laughs> opposing side had all Europeans. <laughs> that, I thought that's interesting. That's very um, very interesting. <laughs> you know, and it, and, funny, and, it, 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 and, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. That yeah. is gonna. It seems to be that way this time. Yes. Whereas before, you always had a faction of European, a group of Europeans who would be concerned and who would, would cross over and join. In the air, in, when the go Governor Air was tried in Britain for, um, for the murder, not of the 400 and not Jamaican, but of George William Gordon, um, white working class people came out and protested against Air, you know? And I'm asking your listeners to really go and see the opera 1865. I went last night, and I'm telling you, you I left there with us, and I, many people left there with a sense because people congregated outside to talk about it. Mm -hmm. This is the 150th anniversary year of the Mount Day Massacre, and the, the Philip Sherlock Centre is hosting, uh, mounting a, an opera called 1865. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the, the visuals, um, you know, seeing Paul Bogle there, hanged mm -hmm. George William Gordon hanged and all the masses of people protesting the courthouse burnt down mm -hmm. um, you come out of it and say what can I do yeah. Or you come out with a resolve to say, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. It's the first time hearing of it, and I'm sure a lot of our, our listeners will be hearing about it for the first time, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that to Powerful our attention. Powerful opera. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, um, not celebrating, we'll but reminding us yes. about what happened. Yeah. And, of course, we will be working together, Kabul. Of course. To ensure yes. that we put our stamp on what should happen in this um, year of commemoration. In short order. Professor Shepard, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate this. Thank as you usual. for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, bye bye. Right, talk later. All right, so that was Professor Berene Shepard, Vice Chair of the CARICOM Reparation. Looking at the historical significance there, the potential to advance knowledge and understanding of chattel slavery. And of course, you heard Professor Shepard mentioned um, that that being um, the ship itself represents one of the earliest attempts to bring East Africans into the transatlantic uh, trade in Africans. A memorial service, she pointed out, also took place on Monday, June 1, to commemorate the victims of the ship. Soil from Mozambique was also was actually used in the service. And a little bit of background. Um, on the 27th of April, 1794, the slaver um, left... Lisbon in Portugal for Mozambique with more than 1,400 iron ballast um, bars on board. On December 3, 1794, it leaves Mozambique for Brazil with more than 400 enslaved Africans on board. On the 27th of December, 1794, it sunk in bad weather off the coast of Cape Town. Berrien Shepherd just told us this very same thing. Here we have one. Lost while carrying a cargo of enslaved people. The um, project is a global partnership. The, the project that actually took the artifact up, artifacts up, the Slave Rex project is called. It's a global partnership among museums and research institutions. We have had Portugal in our sights and we must ask those questions.
by the way, from all indications, a recurring theme at the World Economic Forum on Africa that ended uh, Friday was the abundance of opportunities that can unlock further growth of a continent and the opportunities that this offer to investors for Africa. We're going to be talking about that shortly. Let them swing the sword of the world and kiss with tenderness the frail tomorrows promised me long ago. Let them join their father and I in the eradication of our continued exploitation. But most of all, let them return me to my station, to my powerful throne, for I am Africa's daughter, trapped on this spaceship. All right, we're standing by to speak with Colonel Noel Prehey of the Scots Hall Maroons and Colonel Wallace Sterling of the Moortown Maroons in Portland. Going to be looking at the claim and how to protect the land. Ancestors, please let your people see. They won't listen to me. As we go to the phone lines, live now from Portland, from Moortown, Colonel Wallace Sterling and from... Good morning to you, Colonel uh, Wallace Sterling and, and Noel Prehe. You know, I'm very happy that you could join me this morning. And I know I'm going to start with you, Colonel Sterling, because I know that, I don't know how much you can talk about it, but I know that even as we talk about land, land ownership and protecting the land, um, that you are currently fighting one of those battles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We are, we are doing that, you know, at a place known as Golden Vale in, in Port. Mm -hmm. So it run, part of it went from where it chases all the way up over the hills, up to that part. So it was known as Pastor Run, and then when they acquire more land, it become <coughs> to be known as Golden Vale. Mm -hmm. And then we work, you know, our four and, and by the way, this is the first place where, now it's one of the first free black settlement in, in Jamaica, right. in terms of where people live, right? Yes. And it's on that same land that we have, you know, the Watch Hill, which is a very noted place of our poor parents. And we have many other sites there, you know, like, you know, burial, the whole, I mean, the majority of Jamaicans are black. And I can't see how the black people can be squatting on land that their poor parents have paid dearly for with their life. Um, you know, I mean, you, you, who can, who in their right mind can be fighting uh, or challenging um, the maroon ownership of a land that includes Pumpkin Hill. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another time. I rec recognize that you can't say much about it right now because it is in the courts, but that's a whole lot of land. Um, le let me go to um, Colonel Prehe and, and Scott's Hall. We're going to come back to Wallace Sterling to talk about the, 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 the amount of land um, that the Moortown Maroons um, currently own. But in Colonel Prehe, talk about Scott's Hall um, in terms of a land. How much have you lost over the years and how much do you still, do you still um, own? I mean, I'm talking about the, the, the Scots Hall Maroons. What, what the PD says is that due pro proportion was given to Scots Hall. They did not say how much. So how much, so how much are you on? Well, we don't know the, the estimate of the land. Okay. They only said due proportion was being discussed uh. but, but it didn't say how much so all right no, so, they so, didn't say how much. So, so do you find any major challenges in terms of holding on to what you have and getting information about how much you the, the scots all moons actually own or are entitled yeah, to yeah 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 there are challenges because ever since there has been this land to scotch all maroons they have taxed the land. Okay. Tax the portion given to Scots Hall. So Scots Hall is paying tax on, on that land. Uh, is, does, that go yeah, for yeah. All, does that go for all the areas, um, Colonel Wallace Sterling? Uh, is everybody paying tax on, taxes on all the lands? 
Well, uh, let, let me explain how land goes in how our neck of the hood, right? Yes. How we, how we pay taxes. So what happens is that people do pay taxes for land, right? Because the land is, we have land that we own jointly by everyone. That's what we call the treaty land. Yes. You don't want to. Mm -hmm. But all the other land surrounding that, that people own individually, with your own title and stuff like that, they yes. do pay taxes for it. So sometimes what you find happen is that mm, persons own more land privately yes. than what we do own collectively. So therefore, in the late 60s or something like that, they wanted to be able to pay and they send the taxes people come and then Colonel Patrick Land Valley. I don't think that we get a good return on our tax dollar for, for, the, for, for the upkeep of those kind of roads. Mm -hmm. So... While people are going to be paying taxes, people should see the benefit that they derive from paying taxes. Mm -hmm. And that is where I am with that part of the thing. Okay. And also, I, you know, you mentioned taxes. I would like to see all the big corporations that and all the people that are getting these kind of write down and write up, tax break and so. Give that to some of the poor people too so that they can improve themselves. Mm -hmm. I think, and, and I'm, I'm hearing uh, some rumblings uh, in the. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think, and, and I'm, I'm hearing uh, some rumblings uh, in the uh, in China. And, uh, in dealing with these issues that are coming up, because I would have thought that <clears throat> the last few years, or a few years ago, when this issue came up and we spoke about it at length and we had conversation with the government, that all of these would have been behind us now and we've been moving forward. Something is progressing. The government is destroyed. Might as well go stay and be and everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. at any day, what you do, you enrich the, the rich are red and you make the poor poorer. Yeah. And I hear you and alluding to the fact it seems as if we're fighting the same war over and over and over again. The war for land. We're fighting the war over and over and over again. Uh, and, and, and at times it seems as, as if, you know, yes, it is a cockpit country that you, you, you know, but, but it is also a wider issue of just land, whether it is treaty land or land owned um, by the Maroons. How do you see the, 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 what is the need, do you think, for the Maroons to go forward in protecting um, land you currently own? What I do see is that the government should assist us to identify the boundaries of our land. And as soon as that moon and the government. Mm -hmm. All right, as, as, as you, uh, your main point is understanding the boundaries. I think that is also, no. yes. Who has any more right to it than us? And that is the kind of situation that we have to look at. We have to look at the indigenous rights of the indigenous people in Jamaica, which are in comprise, and they have that land tenure the right to go on the land unmolested, and if anything is to be done on the land, they need to be consulted, and they have a general consultation, and you look at what is right for the people of Jamaica on a whole, what is right for the country, what is the best environmental practices that we can do, because at the end of the day, we are only keepers of this land for our generation to come. And we can't let them in a state that when they come, they have to be creating, moving, lead, moving, arsenic, and all those kind of things on the land. Look at what the gold mine down in Carinth and in Carla. What? Look at the amount of stuff that they leave behind. Mm -hmm. Who is responsible for cleaning it up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and sometimes I am simply saying that the money that we make from mining cannot go to clear up the environmental problem that it creates. Well, I, that I, is the bottom line. That is the bottom line. On, 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 on ground, on land, to say that we will fight this war again if that is what is needed. But we will not give up our land like that. One way or the other, not just for Maroons, but generally for the people of Jamaica. Thank you so much, Colonel Wallace Sterling. We'll hear from you again shortly, I'm sure, as you fight this battle in court. Colonel yeah. Noel Prehe, thank you so much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Okay. All right, thank you so much. All right, uh, Colonels Wallace Sterling and uh, Colonel Noel Prehe there are going to be talking to Colonels um, Fern Williams and Frank Lumsden. Um, who's the Colonel for the Trelawney Town Maroons? Because I'm recognizing that we have not tapped into the Trelawney Town Maroons. But this, because this is something that we're continuing on this program, I'm sure 
that we'll we'll have that in in short order. Let there be light. Let us make man our image and after our likeness in the water's light. I am a witness. I emerge from the darkness. And if you cannot find it within your heart to forgive me, just remember, this is how the Navy. Snatch my mother, try my mother's dress. Some to do, some surrender, they kill the rest. Now there's this bruise and blood exudes from the lower lip. God, I miss my mother's milk. If only I could have just one more sip. And the choir say, miss my mother's milk. If only I could have just one more sip. And the choir sings, Jesus, Jesus, remember all those who prayed for me. Just remember, this is how they made me. Snatch, snatch, they were up and down the coast. Whole families became inventory. Blood and sweat ran day and night. But it was the milk to spill the most. Now, mother, it's insanely sick. Longing for that tug and a nipple from that band of the most. Now, mother, it's insanely sick. But longing for that tug and a nipple from that band of child who is that some mirror of horror. A waiter of the Negroes from the ocean of sorrow. I became Namibia and Angola. I was a member of the Kabundu, the Congo, Congo, Seke, the Teke, Bomb, the Food and Bantu. I became Nigeria, Hossa, Pilani, Yoruba. I was bumping on all the way from the Congo to Cameroon. Senegal, this is how they made me. We're not Africans because we were born in Africa. We're Africans because Africa was born in us. This is how they made me. You're inside of the Africa Forum. It is running Africa, and we go back to the phone lines to speak with the Colonel of the Akompong Maroons, uh, Fern Williams. Colonel Fern Williams joins me now. We hear that there is a threat to the cockpit country in terms of mining. I want, first of all, your take on this. How do you see this? What is happening? Well, um, as far as I am concerned, it is a rumor. Nobody has any, said anything to us. Take into consideration that we, the Maroons, are the owners of the cockpit country. When I say owner of the cockpit country, it is what is given to us. We earn it. We fought for it. And uh, it is not like something was given to mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Uh, first and foremost, whatever little red meat you, one might see on the earth in the Catholic country, it is the sweat, tears, and blood of both the English and the Maroon who fight the war. Because we went up into the Catholic country to hide from them mm-hmm. because we know we could not manage them out on the level. Mm-hmm. As such, we own the captive country. So you're saying as, f- as far as you are concerned, it is a rumor because nobody has said... Our own, some table. I mean, the government, they know that um, they cannot just take things from people like that. Not after living on the land for over 300 years. All right, so there is mining happening. The mining has happened, um, uh, and we see roads are being cut now in the areas where the roads are being cut. These, these, you're not concerned about this, you're saying? This is not... Of course, of course we are concerned about it, and we are anxiously awaiting to have dialogue. In fact, dialogue started, and it was Minica, where the mining took place. You would see that people in those areas are even poorer than when the mining uh, was not yes. taking place. That's because true. at least they have to be forking out money to pay for our health care. One should it. But, but listen, um, Colonel, I hear you and I, and I also hear that you, uh, you two are very, very strident in terms of um, saying to the powers that you're saying that that is not allowed at all. The government is saying that it is outside of some boundary or the other, but you're saying that this is maroon land that you're cutting um, the, the road through. 
and that is not acceptable. How do you and 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 the other um, maroons and the maroon community um, plan to 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 deal with this to stop this? All right. Take into consideration, it is not like first time where we would use bone or arrow and things like that. <laughs> so the only resolution now we have to be using the pen as well. And we, if it takes for us to walk from here to Kingston, when I say here, I'm talking from a kampong, and I am certain that my brothers and sisters over in Portland. And from a kampong, and I am certain that my brothers and sisters over in Portland and St. Mary. Oh, you know, I me stand for that, but me go claim the whole thing. Um, my the point I'm making is that there must be a, a response to the the, the 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 arrogant manner in which the state continues to disregard the people especially the African people of Jamaica, when it comes to issues regarding land. Other issues, but particularly when it comes to issues regarding land. So I will walk with you from a, from a compound to Kingston, or from St. Mary to Kingston, or wherever we need to do it. But I think that there must be a response to this. Um, the, the threat to the cockpit country, which is not just threat to land, threat to the environment, threat to our livelihood, threat to our very existence in terms of the environment. So yes, Colonel, um, very good point that you're making there. There are many other Maroons who are willing to take this fight where it needs to go. Is there a concerted effort among the Maroon Colonels to respond as one unit to what's happening in the cockpit country? Very much so, ma'am. Very much so. In fact, we spoke over the phone um, last week, and I can assure you that Colonel Lumsden, whenever time he should be on the phone, will tell you that he has his especially young men. Yes. So that you know, um, if it take walking, if it take that, we'll have to go to every community where maroon reside especially the one from a kampong yes. i think we are more on the trelawney side mm -hmm. we are more on the trelawney side mm -hmm. you understand um so so where do you go from here Colonel? Co there's, there's a there's a whole lot of land there's a whole lot of land that you've been protecting, um, the people have been protecting for many, many, many years. I remember spending about an entire weekend up in Akompong a few years ago when we just started here at IRFM doing a documentary we called 40 Acres and a Mule about um, the, the Akompong Maroons. And I know the fire, uh, uh, with some time under the kinder tree and the whole thing, I know the fire that is in the bellies. Of, of, of the colonels and their compound ma ma maroons, and I hear it also in your belly. So let me ask the colonel, the entire maroon population. Right, you are. In the treaty, it says that the land belongs to the born and the unborn. No, if they, they steal our land. No, this is no trouble. It is what it is. I don't want to say they're coming to steal again, because you see, we have already lost a great portion of it. Um, on one occasion, it was saying 15,000 acres. Mm -hmm. But I remember that somewhere there we were given um, an ex 3,000 acres. Mm -hmm. And in all, well, it's 4,500 it, it, acres the maroon have, not counting the cockpit. Yeah, it seems to me then, Colonel, that you know um, the documents have to be revisited. The land has to be looked at again, and where lands to be lands are to be restored, lands must be restored along with people's dignity. Lands must be restored, and lands that are currently um, in the hands of, of 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 persons of communities must remain there. And you can't just willy nilly decide that you're going to steal people land uh, and 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 disregard them 
um, without at least sitting down at a table. You know, um, we're seeing a similar thing happening here in St. Anne with the Roaring River Lands, the property in which um, Molimu Marcus Mazaya Garvey's family, entire family was enslaved. Um, we are of the opinion it's quite possible that Molimu Marcus Mazaya Garvey might have been born on the Roaring River estate himself. That land, now the entire acres of land being given away to, 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 to China. I think that at some point, as you talk about the unborn, at some point we have to stand up and say, not just for me, but for my children and their unborn children in terms of protecting and preserving the land. Because one of the thing that, things that has been done is that we're told to look for streets paved with gold um, up in the sky so that we have no claim to the, the land paved with, with, I mean, with grass growing out of it and dirt where you want when you hand through and so on and plant some food. You don't, you're not... Respect yourself. As we call to the ancestors, Queen Nanny of the Maroons. Once again, we're standing up to Wanda Bolas. Because he looks like us, and he talks like us, and he walks like us, he even fights like us. But he is fighting for them. So we call all the Wanda Sarah's Maroons out of a drum. Respect yourself. Everybody dance. Respect your elders here. Yeah, everybody dance. Respect your elders here. Calling all of Jamaica to stand up, stand up for, stand up for your rights. That's what we're saying. Stand up for your rights. Own lands, and they give it away to others. As a people, we're coming out of a drum. We come. We're standing solidly on those crown lands that our ancestors slaved on. We're standing solidly on the crown lands at uh, 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 at Roaring River because that is a watering hole. That's a lifeblood. If you want to find water in St. Anne, you go into the Roaring River Mountains. You go into the Roaring River Straits and Flats and Valleys on both sides of the road. From Duns River to Maumee Bay and even further to Trelawney. That entire area is a bloodstream of St. Anne. It's a bloodstream of a nation because that's where the water is concentrated and the next war is not about gold or diamond or, or oil the war that's coming is a war for water and already there are those who have recognized that and are going across the world conquering on to conquer There's a people here. the lands where the water is There's a people. at what cost at what cost is a question. At whose cost? Buddy Elder. Everybody, everybody dance. Out of a drum, it's time to defend ourselves. This is a dance of the elders. As a people. As we welcome Queen Nanny of the Maroons. We come. As we... As Welcoming Paul Boga out of a drum. I am my ancestor. Out of the drum. The dance. Everybody. It's a dance of the elders. You gotta take a stand even if you're sitting down. Take some time. Take some time. Go within and find your ancestors. Everybody, everybody dance. If you don't know how to do it, they call it praying here in Jamaica. Go within and find your ancestor. Get in touch with your inner ancestor. Name him and name her. And let's go. Out of the drum. We come. Here I come as my ancestor, Chief Taki. Ni Tai Chi. There's a people here. Here I come as my ancestor had Shepsut. As a people. Here I come as my ancestor Ya Asantua. Because if the men won't do it, we will have to do it. Here I come as my ancestor Queen Nzinga. The dance. It's a dance of the elders. For the elder. Everybody, everybody dance. Here I come as my ancestor Patrice Lumumba. The dance. 
Here I come as my ancestor, Yaya Kimpavita. Respect yourself. Reuniting the African family for development. take a minute uh, just to acknowledge uh, a friend, a brother, and a supporter um, of the program, the Africa Forum, Mr. Selwyn Graham. Selwyn Graham uh, transcended last week. We honor his life and his work, our brother and our father. He embodied and practiced the principles of Mualamu Marcus Masaya Garvey just a uh, moment you are of course inside of the Africa Forum and we go through we also understand that the Ghanaian president has declared uh, John Mahama has called for three days of mourning after so many were killed in that explosion 
at the petrol station in Accra. Also uh, in focus right now, that Danny, Danny Jordan's damning letter to FIFA. South African 2010 World Cup boss Danny million dollars that United States prosecutors allege was a bribe after he had a discussion with Nko Sazana Delamine Zuma, now the Africa Union chairperson, of course, the wife. Well, he said in the letter that he, he put the request to FIFA Secretary General Jerome Valke in a dis- under former President Tabo Mbeki. In focus now, this supports the allegation first contained in the U.S. indictment of football officials internationally and unsealed last week that the government of South Africa had agreed to a bribe disguised as a football development contribution for Caribbean football boss Jack Warner and two others. The payment was allegedly to secure their support in the FIFA Executive Committee vote that won South Africa the right to host the 2010 World Cup. Sports Minister Fekile Mbalula, speaking for the government, has insisted that the $10 million payment was intended as a bona fide contribution to football development in the Caribbean. But we are understanding, and a senior government sources in South Africa are saying that members of Jacob Zuma's cabinet are privately not convinced. Also in focus now, you might have heard that a study has found that rules that required Canadian Aboriginals to attend state-funded church schools were responsible for cultural genocide. So there is a ruling of cultural genocide in Canada. I don't know if you picked up on that recently, just last week actually. The report was released on Tuesday and it found that First Nation children were often physically and sexually abused. They were stripped of their self-respect and they were stripped of their identity. This is according to Murray Sinclair, one of the study's authors. More than 130 residential schools operated across Canada. The Canadian government forced more than 150 First Nation Aboriginal children to attend these schools in the 19th century until the mid-1990s. The school sought to integrate the children into mainstream Canadian society, but in doing so, rid them of their native culture. This is uh, really an ongoing issue that we've mentioned here before. Now we have a ruling from the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. The policies have been cited as a major factor in an epidemic of substance abuse on reservations. Students said they were beaten for speaking their native language and were separated from their parents and custom. The truth, and that's in the schools, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which wrote the report, was created in 2006 as part of a $5 billion class action settlement. We must think about this. How do we answer the question, who am I? How do we answer that? And these, I, I mentioned here in the forum many, many years ago, that this is, this is for us the first question to answer. Who am I? We must answer that question. Who am I? Do you want to try answering that question today? Who am I? Where am I from? Where am I from? Answer that too. Where am I going? And how am I getting there? And these are some of the indications um, that they pointed out uh, as of robbing these Aboriginal children of their dignity, of their identity. The Catholic Church is cited and must apologize. And Pope Francis is the one that they've recommended must do so. And we think that that very same thing must happen from all the churches in regard to slavery. Not just an apology, but reparations. All right, just ahead of local and international headlines, 
Here is a very disturbing story, which we're going to get back to. After raising about $500 million in donations meant to help rebuild Haiti following the 2011 catastrophic earthquake, in focus right now, the Red Cross has managed to only build a meager six homes in the country. $500 million dollars collected by the Red Cross. They have only managed to build six homes in the country. And this is according to a joint investigation by the news agencies of ProRepublica and NPR. The prominent U.S. aid organization says it has provided homes to more than 130,000 people. But the actual number of permanent homes the group has built in all of Haiti is six. Six. The settlement unveiled all rampant mismanagement, inflated salaries of employees, and lack of transparency fueled the squandering of millions of dollars. It also suggested that the funds raised for Haiti could have been misallocated by the group, by the aid group, to wipe off at least $100 million worth of debt. So the Red Cross used the money collected for relief and for housing and to help Haitians after the earthquake to pay their $100 million debt and to pay executives and to pay foreigners. The Red Cross, the report said that the Red Cross has celebrated their work, saying it has helped more than 4.5 million Haitians to get back to their feet. But Jean-Marc Belevere, Haiti's Prime Minister at the time of the earthquake, says that's not true. He pointed out that the country's entire population is only about 10 million. And he said, and I quote, no, no, it is not possible. No such thing. Poor Republican NPR say that after the Red Cross declined to show the results of its housing projects in Haiti, the news agency sent a team to the Caribbean country to investigate one of the group's plans earlier in the year. This is news from Irie FM, Jamaica's non-aligned news voice. Good morning, I am Primrose Oliver with the local and international headlines. Prime Minister Portia Sensa Miller is urging Jamaicans to take greater personal responsibility for road safety, even as the government implements strategic measures to make the use of the nation's roads safer. 150 people have died in road crashes since the start of the year, a figure which represents an increase of nine more deaths when compared to the corresponding period last year, speaking at the launch of National Road Safety Running of Red Lights. Government Senator Lambert Brown is urging persons appearing in court for offences to plead guilty if they committed the acts for which they were cited. This, he says, is to avoid unnecessary hearings and enable the courts to deal with other cases. Senator Brown underscored these points during his contribution to the debate on the Criminal Justice Act 2015 and the accompanying bill of the Appellate Jurisdiction Act 2015 at Friday's sitting of the Senate. Mr. Brown said under the new regime, an incentive is being given to persons on trial to plead guilty. The Criminal Justice Act 2015 makes provision for sentence reduction on guilty pleas. A 13-year-old boy drowned on Friday while on a fishing trip with his father and others. That is Jermaine Bernard, Jr., a student of the St. Mary Technical High School. Reports to RFM News that the group left home in Belfield, St. Mary on Friday to go fishing. About 5 p.m., Jermaine got into difficulties and his father, along with another man, tried to rescue him. His father also got into difficulties but managed to swim ashore while the other man took Jermaine to shore. He was taken to the Anata Bay Hospital where he died a short time later. The National Works Agency, NWA, says the trial fort in central St. Mary will be closed tomorrow. This is due to emergency repair works, which are scheduled to take place between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. The NWA says the emergency works at the fort will include excavation, base work, and restoration of the damaged sections. The trial fort was damaged during the flood rains in November and December last year. The Minister of Education has commended primary school principals and teachers for their efforts in preparing the nation's children for the Grade 4 Literacy and Numeracy tests. The tests are scheduled to be held on June 30 and July 1. A total of 116,250 candidates will sit the examinations.
Any news overseas, a BBC investigation has seen evidence that details what, what happened rather to the $10 million sent from FIFA to accounts controlled by former Vice President Jack Warner. The money sent on behalf of South Africa was meant to be used for its Caribbean diaspora legacy program. But documents suggest Mr. Warner used the payment for cash withdrawals, personal loans and to loaner money. Finally, President Barack Obama has said G7 leaders will discuss standing up to Russian aggression in Ukraine as he arrived at the summit in Germany. The U.S. President said trade, violent extremism and climate change would also be featured. And those were the local and international headlines. News is next at 11.45. From the RFM Newsroom, I'm Primrose Oliver. How are you doing, Mr. Wade Brown? I'm doing fine. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just let you do what you're doing there because do you want some water? I'm, yeah, I'm okay right now. Yeah, um, mm. Tea? No tea. Okay. You're, you're ready then. Mm. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> what do we know and how do we know it? <laughs> FIFA? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the source is very important. Um, well, the BBC <laughs> has an investigation out right now. Mm. And if they're to be believed, um, Mr. Warner hmm, has been caught. Mm -hmm. um, um, the legacy program. Yes. Money went to the uh, the GTA supermarkets in Trinidad. Yes. Um, yes. His he has people taking out money um, to pay his, um, his credit card debts and all that stuff. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. It's in the indictment. Mm -hmm. I had so much fun um, after talking to you. I decided I had to read the indictment myself <laughs> because I could. Wow, six that's, years wow, that's a lot. Yes, and also Chuck Blazer. Yes, I was going to mention him. Yeah. Right. So. So what we know mm -hmm. is that the the plot thickens. Definitely, right? Mm -hmm. It's a ten million dollar question, mm -hmm. and the ten million purportedly coming from South Africa mm -hmm. into the Caribbean diaspora mm -hmm. legacy the program. Yeah. Program. What, mm -hmm. what do you, have you found out? What program that is? Not not yet. Um, I guess they were supposed to construct things or build things, but. Um, Nothing so far. Right. And mm. we don't... Uh, have you been able... I know the BBC and there are others who have mm. done it, like the South Africa Times, the Mail and Guardian mm -hmm. in South Africa, that they are following the money. Uh, but, but it's also in the, in the indictment where they, where they follow the money, that $10 million. Yes, because they were listing out the, um, the things that were um, done with it. Yeah. And um, it seems... The supermarket. Yeah, the JTA in Trinidad. That supermarket is owned by who? I think it's Warner, if, if, mm. if I'm... Probably, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> But, whoa, well, um, if this is to be believed, uh, Mr. Warner is definitely guilty. What about the 100, uh, no 100, what about, yeah. Yeah, there's a big payment, debt repayment, mm -hmm. the debt repayment. Mm -hmm. that, that they actually follow the money. Mm -hmm. Part of that went to pay um, was, a personal debt, a personal loan. Yeah, I think 1.6 million was for, I think that was a credit card payment, if, I, if I'm correct. That was a credit card payment. Oh, it was credit card. 1.6 million, I think mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, tr the supermarket went, I think I got 4.6 million. So, um, Sorry, Mr. Yeah. Warner, um, <laughs> mm. well, it's not looking good on his part. Definitely not looking good. good. So, a $10 million question again. Mm -hmm. Because remember last week when I started this program, I read a letter from, uh, the statement from Tabo Mbeke. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, in Washington, off it totally. But another $10 million question is, what did Tabo Mbeke know and also Sepp Blatter mm -hmm. about this $10 million? And who did Sepp Blatter talk to mm -hmm. when he found out about the request for the 10 million? Because they said he intervened. Mm -hmm. wow. So And Sepp Blatter don't deal at a local level. Yes, definitely. He would have talked to the president, don't he? Mm -hmm. He would have gone to the top. Um, I would think so. That's how he functioned, don't mm -hmm. he? Right. So, so I always say that the entire fee for um, hierarchy is... They're, it's they're complicit. Here. Yeah. And that is why I think Jack Warner has a point when he says... I can blow this thing out of the water. But he was he was saying that for years now, you know, um, and I'm not seeing him doing it. So I mean, why is he? Right, because he was trying to save his butt. Because he figured if I don't say too much, then you know, you you won't hear too much about me. There was this <laughs> ten million, there is other, but everything is out there already. I don't know Definitely. what else can come out about Jack mm -hmm. Warner. So he has nothing to lose at, yeah, lose at this stage. It, yeah, at this point, you're looking like you're guilty, and everybody else is over that side, and you're the only one doing it. Just come out and say it, especially if you have evidence. 
So this 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 ten million dollars for mm-hmm. our listeners, everybody know already, was paid from so was uh, was ten million dollars mm-hmm. paid to into Jack Warner's mm-hmm. account by FIFA. Mm-hmm. On the request of South Africa, yeah. South Africa was saying no, no, no. But the, it, it is it was for the for the legacy fund, and South mm-hmm. Africa is still saying that. By the mm-hmm. way, but Danny Jordan, have you seen his letter? It was published yesterday. No, I didn't read it, but I, heard, I was yeah. skimming through it. Right, but mm-hmm. but he he has kind of driven the, the final nail in the coffin mm-hmm. by fingering um, Jacob Zuma's wife, who was at the time the the Foreign Affairs Minister, was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and this is interesting. She's now the head of the Africa Union. She mm-hmm. was here just the other day. Mm-hmm. And also, what were two, two top ministers in the South African government. Because it seems to me from what he said in the letter, and that letter mm-hmm. was written, when was it? Like a few, 2007? There was a six, seven, yeah. Right, and then the, 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 the other letter to Valka was written in 2008. Mm-hmm. So, what, my understanding is that the money was paid out in between those two letters. You know, Donny Jordan's letter it was saying... Three transactions in um, February, January 4, um, February 1, and March 10. So, it's that January 4 payment? Yeah. It was paid before the, the Oliphant letter, you know. Mm-hmm. It was paid between Donny, Donny Jordan's out mm-hmm. that he paid that money. And then he also stipulated where it should go. Um, so yeah. it went. So it went into into Jack Warner's um, accounts controlled by Warner. It's, it's Conquer Cap account controlled, controlled by, by Warner. Warner. That's but but then the money has been followed, mm-hmm. and 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 the, and it don't lead into the Caribbean mm-hmm. legacy diaspora it legacy does, yes. program. And um, if we're to believe the BBC, the, um, what they're putting out on the websites, it shows it lists everything, and um, Warner is not looking looking too good right now. Definitely not looking too good. Right. I, I, mm. One of the reasons why I asked you if you right. wanted water and tea and so on, because I didn't expect you to come talking like that this morning. At <laughs> 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 I don't have uh, anywhere to go with this thing. I mean, I'm on my own. Look, my, my thing is that corruption is everywhere, right? It's in the European game. It's it's everywhere. But um, especially with Blatter, I, I personally did not want to see him resign. You know, honestly, I didn't want to see him go. I wanted him to stay. He won do what is his term and go in his, in the sunset mm-hmm. because. He's, I think he's guilty of corruption somewhere, but I think right now the main reason you have this uproar is because he's not playing um, geopolitics like how America and Europe wants him to play. And that's well, just off. Yes, that's yeah, why I, that is why. That's someone mm-hmm. like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, welcome. welcome. <laughs> Don't know where you went. But you know what I found out? Did Nelson mm-hmm. Mandela come into the Caribbean to Trinidad? Um, um, just before the I FIFA, know, the, the South Africa World Cup? I don't remember. I um, memory can't go that far. Did he? I don't remember. Did he? Is a question. I don't remember. Um, you should know that one. I don't remember. I think he did. So, are you saying that he was a part of this whole against thing? his daughter's um, wishes? Or? Yes. Mm. The so. U.S. indictment alleges mm. that Concacaf President Jack Warner and Secretary General Trump mm. Blazer visited Morocco. Mm-hmm. That's what the indictment saying, you know. Yeah. That he took one million dollar for Morocco to win. Mm-hmm. And uh, South Africa, recognizing that, up the bet. <laughs> said, Morocco, you two million, I will, when I said it's not a card game, I will see you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, see you I'll see you 10 million. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, Warner, Blazer, according to the indictment, and a third CONCACAF official mm-hmm. went to South Africa, the FIFA, FIFA Congress, mm-hmm. and... May 15, 2004, in Zurich. That every person who voted was bribed. I mean, yeah. I that because, obviously uh, not. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think FIFA, so. FIFA, because what the, contact, what the indictment is implying mm-hmm. is that their Morocco was tipped to win mm-hmm. over South Africa. Mm-hmm. And that's when South Africa raised Raise, Morocco yeah. mm-hmm. 10 million. Mm-hmm. But how many persons would have been bribed then? And and what, I think, why is America why even, why and, and, up that even and why is America even interested in cleaning up a that's game that's that controlled by, by Europe for the for the past so many years? Right, well, that's and another yeah. program. It's like you realize that, 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 that they jumped into an investigation that was in Europe where Switzerland was probing in Switzerland. Switzerland still probing, and they didn't. They arrested South American people who did you, you remember that? Jack, did you remember that? Jack, did you remember that Jack Warner attended um, the inauguration of Tabo and Becky? I don't remember that. Um, Jack, did, you remember that Jack, w- did you remember that Jack Warner attended um, the inauguration of Tabo and Becky? I don't remember that one. But they don't want Russia to be 
this is, I mean, so yes, and so the politics of it now, I think, is, is worth discussing mm -hmm. because while we have all of these things coming out, why I'm enjoying it so much because it really reads to me like a novel, like a very <laughs> good novel. I love these espionage. The thing, kind of, yeah, the thing I like about know, it is like, yeah. it's like you, are, you can now connect the dots, like you're pointing out with Nelson Mandela and the visiting Trina. It's like everything yes. is now, it's like a and puzzle. the doctor's yeah, order, yes. and when he was opposition leader, and then when he said. Remember now, he said there's going to be an avalanche of information did, yes, coming out mm -hmm. regarding elections in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And was it um, Kamala Prasad yes. um, Bissessa? She walked out of yeah. Parliament when? This week, last yes, week, uh, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, she walked out when Jack Warner was talking because Jack now nah, keep him out. <laughs> you don't know Jack. <laughs> Pamela, <laughs> you don't know Jack. <laughs> But for me, though, um, I know that there's a, there's a story, like a wider story, but, but I'm salivating over it because it is so juicy. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, but that made me laugh is that um, he was saying that money from FIFA, I think, um, went... Very well, impact Hillary Clinton's run. Yeah, could definitely. If they really go down that, mm -hmm. that road, because they seem them want to just deal with it. it, it there's a, there's a, there is a racist element in it, it is, yeah. and you cannot ignore that. That's that, true. That, that, that's that true. Is there. What well, do you wear for? What are going on this song? Um, UFO, um, they, 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 look, I don't even know where they're going because to me they're scared of losing power. They want the talent from South America and Africa and, and they want the TV revenue but they want to control the game. They want all the World Cups, they want all the glory. So right now they want a stooge and Blatter has expanded whether we like it or not, expanded football globally and they don't want, you realize that um, the last World Cup is, is where um, Brazil South Africa, no, Russia, that's, that's what, three brick countries, brick countries, that's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. major Western countries, they don't like yeah, that. Yeah. So, I mean, they want the World Cup for themselves, and the World Cup is a big financial thing to every country. So yeah. they wouldn't would necessarily I like think that. that's the next conversation, mm -hmm. the politics of, of FIFA's fall. But also, I would like to look at, you see, um, not just, uh, it, it, all right, so who is, in, who is in the, the, the likely successor that's for a, Sepp Blatter? That's the thing, I, I, I can't see any, I don't, I, I don't know. I what about the Chinese, the, the Chinese um, gentleman who spoke? Uh, he's an executive at FIFA. He I, said that I, he's interested. I don't know. What's don't his know name it, again? Lee Chong? Something like that. But um, yeah. look, to be a FIFA president, in my opinion, like you need to have a name, like a star name. Like I don't know. You need a big name, personality. You can't just come and I think you need a woman. I won't really. Why yeah, I think I? you need a woman. I mean, yeah. because, I mean, so much years and in man, them sure say all them do is corrupt. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, a woman no, I, the, that's, that's strong. But I mean, look, the game has expanded, you know, and money is, is being made. I can't deny that. Yeah, a woman no, I, the, that's, that's strong. But I mean, look, the game has expanded, you know, and money is, is being made. I can't deny that. So you can't have to say, congratulations, play hard and play good. <laughs> yeah, and they should wear tighter clothes. <laughs> and wear tighter shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who, so is pure man around that program then? I don't think so, but the thing is, if you're going to have a per somebody running the thing, it must be more than just because they're a woman or a man. I mean, how many want to be involved? No, no, it's, I'm, I'm saying, and I'm not saying that mm -hmm. at all. I'm saying that, all right, so you have what well, a man up at top mm -hmm. and all of them corrupt. Uh, no, Put a, and on, there's that, no that is, woman. I'm saying that, all right, so you have what well, a man up at top mm -hmm. and all of them corrupt. Uh, no, Put a, no, and, and there's that no is, that woman. Is harsh, that is harsh. It is harsh, but it's hard to carry on kind of rules regarding women. The woman for parting or whatever. I mean, no, I'm just crazy. So I'm not, you know, I'm just saying. Come on, they couldn't, I don't think they could ever even try. They couldn't try that. Jack want to want tight shots, you know. Ali might want dress. And don't forget that black upset even one thief set up group you can't speak out against like the gays because remember he's saying that good, you don't go to Qatar and do that thing on there. Right, <laughs> so yes, yes, so. They're upset. Exactly. So can you imagine <laughs> the rules that would come into FIFA? You know, yeah, you just have a call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. You know, call it a day. But it's an interesting thing as it unfolds. I would like to see where it leads. Mm -hmm. I, do, I, I think that if everybody fear in terms of the investigations, mm -hmm. the, the wheels are in motion, you can't just stop at Jack Warner. Mm -hmm. It has to go way beyond. Yeah. Because if Jack Warner was able to do it, mm -hmm. then everybody else yeah. would but, have been but complicit. But I, I have a really bad feeling about all of this because even right now, I just feel that like the smaller countries are going to be squeezed. Because like it or not to me, Blatter had the best interest of the smaller nations but mainly well, like because he realized that, that they were keeping him, him in power but he had their best interest and even right now in CONCACAF realized that but he's just one man FIFA is a system I, I know I know that is true that is true so he's, he was a system no I don't think so 
Right, so I'm thinking that the system corrupt, mm -hmm. and it is what it is. It allowed Jack Warner to, uh, to it allowed Sepp Blatter to appear mm -hmm. as if he had the best interest of people yeah. at heart, which was not necessary. Because of it anyway. look at Congo yeah. right now, they have this special committee. You realize who's who is in charge? Who the heads of Mexico, Canada, of all places, yes. and the USA, and the Caribbean region is, is has the most votes. And but what, what, so why the Caribbean me? region allow that to happen? And I, them have the most I, votes. I don't know, but they're well, now, they need to stand up and stop behaving that. like slaves. <laughs> It, look, Where is I, Captain? I'm worried about feeling about this. Where is Captain in all of this? He's not speaking. No, but Captain can sit back and make uh, the Canada, America, and Mexico take it over. <laughs> He's just one. <laughs> and in name no call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're oh. going to leave it there. Mm -hmm. We're going far. But, you know, these people think as it unfolds, we're mm -hmm. really, really loving it. By the way, in the indictment, there are a lot of unnamed people. They're called mm -hmm. co-conspirators. Co yes. I've been able to identify about five. Really? Right? Very, very good. And I, I, I said, it, like, you know, that narrow it down mm -hmm. to, to it has to be one of these persons because there's enough mm -hmm. information there oh. to say it must be one of these persons. Can you name any? Um, in terms of narrowing, take South mm -hmm. Africa for example. Mm -hmm. You have co-conspirator number fifteen and number sixteen. Mm -hmm. It has to be either Sexuale, Jordan, mm -hmm. or uh, Kosa, oh, okay. right? And then, you know, in, in CFU, mm -hmm. the, you have co-conspirator number twenty-three. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you to narrow that down. <laughs> I, I, we, we'll talk later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, good tell him yeah. I don't want to hold it. Right. <laughs> We're gonna go live to Ghana now, by the way. <laughs> You're inside of the Africa Forum. It is running African. We want to go to the phone lines live where um, my brother and very good friend, also Deputy Managing Director of Network Broadcasting Company Limited, operators of Radio Gold 90.5 FM, Monty 100.1 FM, and TV Gold in Accra, Ghana, is standing by. Running African, reuniting the African family for development. Prime I is standing by in Ghana, um, not under good circumstances because Ghana is now reeling from a fire at um, in Accra and also uh, floods. We're going to talk to Prime I about that. Prime I, my brother, are you there? Um, I'm here. All right, greetings. Good to hear your voice. Greetings, greetings. You're Skyping, yes. so if we talk over each other, then um, we'll just try and fix that. Can I actually see him? I don't want him to see me, you know, but can I see him? <laughs> Prime I, can I, I can't see you, you know, can you see me? <laughs> well, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. Can't you can't see me, you know you can't <laughs> see me. <laughs> All right, listen, Prime I, um, on, on, a, on a sad occasion because of what's happening in Ghana, but before I go to the floods and the fire, um, what's your take on, on what's happening in South Africa regarding um, the, the, the $10 million payment. And is, is, is there a conversation going on in Ghana, in radio, in media, in any serious way about all of this? The FIFA downfall or scandal? Oh, yes. Did we lose him? All right. Okay. All right. So we're not hearing Prime Eye right now, but we're getting him back online. Um, we're, we're Skyping. And um, and I have a good team. Kubano is in the house. So too is Malik. Okay, brilliant. We we have you back. So go right ahead. Yes, uh, a lot of people have the view that there's some kind of uh, politics underneath all that's happening. Yes, uh, a lot of people have the view that there's some kind of uh, politics underneath all that's happening. Uh, you know that uh, so the power situation, the flooding situation, but we're finding the best way to get into Ghana to do an interview like this right now is through Skype, and um, I think he's no, no, not back with us yet. No, I, I did that. All right. Um, so just to give you some background um, to what's happening in Ghana, is he back with us? Pramay? Yes, Kabu. All right, we, we keep losing you. And I, I, I hear you. You're saying that there is a conversation in Ghana regarding um, the, the FIFA scandal and also that there's po people are seeing the, the politics behind it. Because we keep losing you, right. let, let us move right on to the ongoing situation there now. Can you give us an update? Um, let our listeners know what exactly happened regarding, first of all, the fire and then what is the situation regarding the flooding? Right. Uh, well, the f it, you know, it's actually a, a twin disaster Ghana experienced uh, last Wednesday, that's uh, June 3, um, on the night of, uh, of Wednesday, 
June 3, uh, uh, that's around 10, 10 p.m. Uh, in Accra uh, at a place we call Kwame Nkrumah Circle. There's a, there's a gas filling station uh, close to that circle uh, which exploded. And um, it exp interestingly, it exploded in the middle of a, a heavy downpour. Uh, and there was flooding as well around that area. And uh, the, the explosion came about, like, as a matter of fact, the media is, is speculating that uh, uh, it all started when someone lit a match, a uh, smoke actually lit a match, uh, which dropped into the water. And uh, the problem was that there was a tanker full of fuel which just arrived before the downpour, and apparently the tanker was leaking. So, you know, as the flood came by, uh, the leakage went into the water and, and, and there was this heavy stench of petrol in that area at the time. Uh, so the, the, the flood was laden with petrol and then someone, uh, according to the media, lit, lit a match. We dropped into the water and then the fire started. So uh, it went straight into, the, you know, into some very sensitive areas of that gas station and the explosion took place. Um, uh, of course, there was the flood as well, which which uh, ravaged homes, uh, took took away lots of vehicles and, and you know properties of, of of people in various parts of of the, of the capital. Uh, and the death toll, uh, according to the government, is 150. But the the latest update is that uh, it's believed over 200 people have have passed away as 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 a result. So, I mean, it's, it's such a terrible, terrible situation. The president, John Dramani Mahama, has declared three, day, uh, three days of, of uh, national mourning, which actually ends today, and has uh, set aside about 60, 60 million uh, Ghana cities uh, to, to support the families affected by, by this uh, twin flood and fire uh, disaster. Just yesterday, we had the president of Togo also coming into the country to 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 sort of uh, commiserate with us in 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 this in this terrible, terrible, terrible disaster and terrible time. And our 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 hearts and our sympathies, really, and condolences with the people of Ghana uh, this morning. We feel this especially closely. We feel, you know, when when disasters happen on the continent of Africa. But when you talk about Kwame in, in Kuma Circle, it's a place that a lot of us in Jamaica know very, 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 very well. And we are identifying right. on many, many different levels with what we are hearing uh, coming out of Ghana. Um, disasters happen all across the world. This is especially, as you said, it's a double one. Army, uh, for Ghana, how are people? Uh, is, is, before we go to that, what, what's the situation now with the rains? What, what's the forecast? Is, are the rains still falling? Yes, the, yesterday, for example, the, the rains came down again, and uh, according to the Ghana Meteorological Service, uh, uh, there's, there's a rainstorm coming from uh, Benin into into this part of the region so i mean the warnings are, are always uh, in in the media that we should be careful when when we step we step out there but i mean the the are concerned about it's prime i we're speaking with he is the deputy managing director of a network broadcasting limited operators of radio gold 90.5 fm monty 100.1 fm and tv gold in Accra, Ghana. Kind of just giving us an update on the situation there regarding the fire at that petrol station in, in Kwame Nkuma Circle. I know for those persons who visit Ghana very often, Circle is where we go to the taxi man. Circle is where we go to the bus. Um, we're there a lot. This is where we are a lot when you go into into Ghana. So we know exactly what, what, what where, you know, he's uh, talking about. Uh, All right. Yes. Yeah. So, so you were saying to us, uh, 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 Primai, that one of the main concerns of Ghanaians? Yes. Is, 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 you know, this, it, you know, the flooding is almost a perennial issue in, in, in this country now. Almost every year, you know, we have terrible flooding, you know, people lose their lives. Of course, not to this magnitude. You know, we talk about it, and then we all go back to sleep. So, I mean, a lot of people have been have been talking about this, and uh, you know, Ghanaians have have been angry with themselves, maybe, and with the government. You know that 
we are not enforcing the laws, the environmental laws, the laws that make sure that people do not build on waterways, the, the laws that make sure that unauthorized structures are not placed in pla you know, are not, you know, put up where they're, you know, they, they, they are not supposed to be. And, you know, the laws are there in the books, but somehow when governments come and go, and a lot of, you know, governments have tried to clamp down on building in, you know, on, on waterways. But each time they try to do that, there's, there's this outcry and, you know, people actually threatening them. We have a similar situation here in Jamaica, of course. Prima is talking about Ghana. We've lost him again. But Prima is talking about Ghana. But it's a very similar situation here in, in Jamaica. And we have this very same conversation every time. Why? Issues facing African uh, people on the continental African are so similar across the African diaspora. And part of and parcel of how to deal with some of those issues are for us to just have that paradigm shift because we can change our situations in a lot of these cases. Sometimes, you know, we contribute to, to, to some of um, the disasters that impact us. And I'm not saying that this is what is happening in Ghana. I'm just saying hearing Primai talk about, you know, um, where people build, where people live, how people dump and so on, and how this affects you in, in heavy rainfall. Similar situation here in Jamaica. Um, are you back with us, Primai? All right, not back with us yet. All right, when he comes back, we'll, we'll have him for the final time. We are Skyping, and sometimes during the morning hours like this it does drop uh the line and we'll we'll get back to him hardware nutrition let your food be a medicine and your medicine be your food all right prime I'm, um so you say uh, hello prime I'm? no no not with us all right um we are trying to make that connection uh cubano doing a brilliant job here um, there are concerns in Cuba, too, with agriculture, Cubano. I should just interview at the same time, because one of the main concerns is that there's ag uh, organic farming happening in, in Cuba on a large scale now in, in many different areas of Cuba. But we're finding that, uh, <laughs> we're finding that with the new agreements being signed and the, and, the, and the new relationship between Cuba and America, the question has been posed um, whether or not Cuba will be able to withstand big agriculture, big agribusinesses, and at the same time, you know, what's in the fine print? Monsanto, genetically modified foods, Cubano, as a farmer yourself. Uh -huh. What can you tell us about that? Uh, well, a farmer yourself who've lived in Cuba for how long? I think for nine to fifteen years. Talking to Mike. Yeah, I think they'll be able to sustain it because they're hard workers, and um, I think the país lo puede sostenerlo porque la gente está interesado en trabajando en las fincas y por eso se puede sostener todo la economía con la agricultura. Ah, grassy. <laughs> All right, so Cubano, our engineer is in the studio. Um, helping me to uh, make this connection to Ghana. We still don't have our connection, so I think we're going to have to, to end it here, Cubano. Uh, and, and we'll just wrap up with Primai. I'm so sorry, Primai, that we've lost you in the middle of all of this, but you also understand um, the challenges that we face in making the connection this morning. Um, our broadcast assistant will be calling him back and having that conversation. All right, so Prime I. Deputy Managing Director, Network Broadcasting Company Limited, operators of Radio Gold 90.5 FM, Monty 100.1 FM in Accra, Ghana. Really, really um, a serious situation unfolding there in Ghana. But also we find, you know, people rallying because Ghana. We see already and we heard from Primai that the president of Togo has already come over. It is just a step across the border. Um, just to see what's happening, uh, extend his sympathy and see how we can assist. And I bet you anything that is happening right across West, Afri West Africa in terms of how the, the countries are responding to Ghana. It really does happen like Ghana. We'll continue to watch the flood situation in Ghana and we'll also um, be talking to Primai from time to time to find out what the challenges are, what's needed regarding those who perished in the fire. Reuniting the African family for development. Tucson was a mighty man, and to make matters worse, he was black. 
All right, thank you so much once again, Prime Eye. We, uh, we're very happy to at least have had you uh, for the few minutes that you could have been on uh, the program this morning. I know you're still listening online, so thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much. We can spoil our African connection. <laughs> we love that, she says. We shall keep it going. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And you too, my brother. You too. So we were telling you about the situation in Haiti and the Red Cross and the fact that a new report published has found that of the $500 million collected by the Red Cross to assist Haitians after the earthquake in 2011, that only six houses... Who is going to step in? What about the Clinton Foundation? They collected millions to, you know... Millions of dollars in aid, the Clinton Foundation for Haiti. I cannot for the life of me understand how Haiti continues to be treated this way and the world does not stand up and, and, and it continues to happen over and over and over. I do not like this impotence among black people. And I'm not talking about Haiti now. Haiti, you know, Haiti did what they had to do and have been brought to their knees for, for, for winning while the rest of us stand by. Because we have our black leaders of the world's leading advanced economies. It's taking place in Bavaria, Slosh Ilamu, uh, El Mau Hotel. And that's outside Munich. It's today and it's also uh, tomorrow. Slosh Ilamu, uh, El Mau Hotel, and that's outside Munich. It's today, and it's also uh, tomorrow. And I don't, they have invited Iraq to, to come talk about ISIL, but um, that's it. I, I don't know. Summit today? This is very important. Antibiotic resistance. I looked at the agenda in terms of what they've published, not all of it, but antibiotic resistance. Marine governor invited Iraq to, to come talk about ISIL, but um, that's it. I, I don't know. Summit today? This is very important. Antibiotic resistance. I looked at the agenda in terms of what they've published, not all of it, but antibiotic resistance, marine governance and poverty-related diseases. Tell you what else is on the agenda. FIFA corruption. FIFA corruption is on the agenda today. Uh, and also um, Primeye's point. They're also talking about the controversial free trade agreements, the US, EU, TTIP, T -T -TIP, and also about Ebola. We're going to spend some time talking about that US, EU, T -T -TIP, you know. All right, so the G7 leaders will also discuss retail, and US President Barack Obama has already uh, spoken once, and um, he's urging EU leaders to back the extension of anti-Russia sanctions imposed on Moscow last year over its alleged involvement in the armed conflict in the eastern Ukraine. Haiti is not in the, on the agenda, but poverty-related diseases on the agenda. I wonder if they're going to talk about those poverty-related diseases transmitted and transferred by United Nations workers. It's a good point. I'm not taking it back. Now, in 2014, the G8 format became the G7, as I told you, because they kicked out Russia. And uh, the... Seven now are Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. So that's that. They're planning how, what we'll be focusing on for the next year and how we're going to focus on it and so on. But power, as we've heard from time to time in this space, is someone defining your reality for you and you living according to that. I created my own reality. I say who? <laughs> I say who I am. I say where I'm from. I say where I'm going and I say how I'm getting there. The US President Barack Obama has already uh, spoken once and um, he's urging EU leaders to back the extension of anti-Russia sanctions imposed on Moscow last year over its alleged involvement in the armed conflict in the eastern 
Ukraine, Haiti is not in the, on the agenda, but poverty-related diseases on the agenda. I wonder if they're going to talk about those poverty-related diseases transmitted and transferred by United Nations workers. It's a good point. I'm not taking it back. Now, in 2014, the G8 format became the G7, as I told you, because they kicked out Russia. And uh, the seven now are Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. So that's that. They're planning how, what we'll be focusing on for the next year and how we're going to focus on it and so on. But power as we've heard from time to time in this space, is someone defining your reality for you and you living according to that. I created my own reality. I say who? <laughs> I say who I am. I say where I'm from. <laughs> This is our saying goodbye for today. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Aluja Continua of the Torah is Serta. My name is Kabu, Kabu Ma'at Kiru. Uh, Wa good. And tell them all one. Howdy. Until we meet again. See you next week.